Hey everyone, it's Jim from Melatone Kits. And in this special episode, I'm going to talk about a fun discovery. Now, when we do a lot of prototyping work and design work, we'll come up with um, we'll come up with a little improvement to circuits that are, we know well and use all the time. And sometimes in a completely different area of of work, we'll discover something interesting, something worth exploring. And that's the story that I'm going to tell today. So through the magic of editing, we're going to reset the bench and we'll start right at the beginning. So this is where everything started on that fateful day. These are our standard volume pots. They're a stereo 100k Alp. And what that what that means is that we have basically two volume pots inside one chassis. And that means when you rotate your volume knob, you're changing the volume for both the left and right channel. Now, these work really well. They sound good. They're compact. They're affordable. They're essentially, the, for an analog pot, they're basically the industry standard. But one of the problems with any dual gang anything is that you need to have your sections or your channels match. So that's what I was busy doing one day. And there's always rejects. We try to keep the pots um, inside of 2%. So I was measuring away and thinking about there's got to be a better way. And of course, there is a better way. And you put this little board on and this is what we use actually and that makes for a much easier connection and we've been thinking about putting a trimmer on the pot so that we can figure out how to get these balanced inside of one percent which would be even better and at that point i thought well i've wanted to do some prototyping work with a stepped attenuator and a stepped attenuator is basically a volume pot but it gets to the resistive elements a little bit different and we're going to do a little sketch up in a minute but here is a stepped attenuator and yes it looks bloody complicated but actually almost every contact does the same as its neighbor and we'll talk a little bit more about how that works in just a minute so let me just go grab some sketches and i'll show you the differences about how these two pots work and in fact, in this week's Tube Lab, we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of pots and talk a little bit more about the, broad, the broader context of what we're doing today in detail. But stick with me because the results are astonishing. So they're well worth waiting for. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's a standard resistive track volume pot the Alps and 99% of all the volume pots that were made until the digital age began. So this is you're going to have a resistive track all the way around and in this case we have two of them. We're going to have a wiper with a nice little kind of a contact point that'll sit with a little bit of pressure on our resistive track one end goes to ground, one end is the signal coming in, and the wiper here is the signal coming out. Now depending on the position of the wiper will depend on the amount of resistance to ground. So the way this works is if you've got a lot of resistance in the lower volumes, now this is a logarithmic pot, so this thing is not a linear taper. And the log function um, increases exponentially. And it's, it's how our hearing perceives volume changes. So that's why volume pots are done logarithmically. So what happens here is we essentially have a lot less resistance to ground on this side of the wiper. And therefore, a lot of the signal will bleed off to ground leaving a very low signal 
as the volume pot is turned up, you're going to end up with a lot more resistance at this end to ground. And as a result, the vast majority, until you're at maximum volume, until all the signal will actually go through and, and pass out. Now, I may not have drawn this quite right, but that's basically how the circuit works. So, and the reason why I did that is that we could take a look at a stepped attenuator. So let's drop that in and see how that compares because it works similarly, but a little bit differently. So the way a stepped attenuator works is you have switches and we've got, now there's, this is a 24 stepped attenuator and it's a stereo stepped attenuator, so it's 24 times two. So there's 48 contact points plus the wiper. So there's a pair of wipers. So that makes for 50 contact points. So it gets pretty busy. But the interesting thing is each and every one of these contact points does the same thing. So here's our circuit as we built it. So the signal comes in, we go through a 1K resistor it's part of the resistor network. It also establishes a, um, a 1K grid stopper that's basically permanently in place. We come through to the wiper and we hit a switch and that switch connects up to a resistor. So at, let's say normal listening volumes we'd have 100 ohms or 100 R resistor. That resistor is connected up to a ground strap that goes all the way around to ground and I'll show you the build in just a minute. So that's our our resistor network that bleeds off what we don't want to ground and it leaves what's left in the signal to go out. So the signal out is actually made is connected to the same point. Now the beauty of a step attenuator, well let's start with the negatives. The negative is that you can only have within, um, you have a finite number of steps. So it, you have to be creative. It's just like early pro computer programming and you only had so much data to work with and, that was, and so much processing power and so much storage. So Charles and I became creative with how to use the 24 steps. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute, but <coughs> pardon me. But the beauty of how this works is that instead of having a bloody big resistive track and all the distortion that you were going to see from having that long a resistive track, is you've got a, a 1K resistor, a 100 ohm resistor, or one of the other resistors in circuit and the signal passes through here like here what you don't want drains off here and what's remaining comes out here and the clarity is unbelievable the improvement in clarity let me repeat that the improvement in clarity by not having the signal running along a resistive track is is absolutely stunning so let's go and take a look at the actual build and it'll be easier for you to understand this diagram. Okay, so here's our basic stepped attenuator prototype. And we've got a volume knob and it goes clickety click, right? Because it's a step, it's, not, it's no longer a continuous resistive track with a wiper on it. It's actually basically 24 switches, right? So here's, here's a pair of inputs. This is the way we normally build our preamps. So depending on which way the switch goes, depending on which stereo pair are in circuit. And over here you might say, well, how come you've got two pairs of RCA jacks coming out? Well, I thought here's a really great opportunity. If somebody needs to pull off, let's say, a low level output for a subwoofer, well, why don't we split the signal at this point? It's very easy to do. I'll show you how it's done when we get into the build. 
And because there is no IEC connection, right? There is there is no connection to ground. So we're going to be you're going to depending on the system that this is installed in, you're going to be relying on the ground connections that are passing through the shield. And in our gear, that's perfectly fine. That'll work that'll work really well. But I've put a ground post here as well in case you need to bring in an auxiliary ground connection. So it's just a matter of convenience. Okay, well, let's flip it over and open it up. Okay, let's take a peek under the hood. Now the bottom plate's got a ground strap connecting it up to the top plate. Let's see if that'll stay put or if I have to take that off. And maybe it'll stay put. Okay, don't do that at home, folks. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. And I'll point out the the details of this. It's rather simple. And let's just get it propped up so you can see inside a little bit better. Got my handy little block. Okay, there's the switch on the input side. So all that does is just switch between two pairs of RCAs. That gives us a left and right channel out. Here's our 1K resistor over here. And here's our right and our left channels coming in on what is basically the wiper contact for the stepped attenuator. Here's our resistors and they are done in matched pairs to 0 0.001 ohm, something like that. So now you can see um, why this unit would have such amazing uh, balance and sound stage because every step is as perfectly matched as I can do with my gear within reason um, and each one of these resistors is chosen to give a particular step in volume change you can see here this is the ground um, strap that each pair is tied to comes all the way along and down here to the chassis and our um, I don't know if you can see yet yeah, you can see it our we've gone and strapped the shield of the RCA axes are all strapped and they all come down to the same star ground point and here is our connection let me go and get my sketch out because this might freak some of you out a little bit so here's our connection. You see, here's our input. There's our 1K coming on to the contact arm would be a better way to, 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 to turn this. Let's not call it a wiper because it's not a wiper. Let's call it a contact arm. And here is, here we're connected in. Here's our drain to ground. And here is our signal, the remainder of the signal coming out. And there it is right there. There's the connection. And to give an option to have a second pair of RCAs out it's very simple you just you just run two left channels in parallel two right channels in parallel and Bob's your uncle and uh, because there won't be when you're feeding the from a stepped attenuator would be feeding a preamplifier stage or if we were taking off a second pair of RCAs and feeding a low level input to a subwoofer, we're not feeding any current. So we're not gonna see an appreciable or very, very, very little amounts of current. You can't move voltage without current, right? Everybody gets that. But the amount of current that we're talking about is extremely low. So we're not gonna see a voltage drop of the signal or nothing that you could appreciably measure. So that's, that's the whole shebang and the um, the advantage to doing the volume this way of course is a n there's a number of advantages one as I mentioned you get a very precise volume on your left and right channels which w one of the first things Charles noticed in critical listening is he said wow the sound stage is absolutely stunning and it is stunning now we do a dual mono topology throughout uh, all of the kits 
and um, and that helps an enormous amount in getting for good stereo separation and as a result great sound stage this is just basically building upon that whole that whole design philosophy and the other thing that that you you get is a very simple signal path have a look at this so this is let's say the signal coming in off of a turntable yeah so it, it's coming off of the turntable preamplifier so it's up to line level at this point maybe 1.5 volts rms and at that point we're controlling it to feed into a preamplifier. The preamplifier is going to bring the voltage up to the point at which uh, we can drive uh, a pair of monoblocks or a stereo integrated amplifier, but basically we need to have some control over that line voltage. So this doesn't have any gain whatsoever. So if you are coming into one of our preamps like the Universal 6 or 12 SN7 or the E80CC. Um, what you're going to do with that preamp is you're going to take the Alps volume pot, you put it on maximum. So there's almost no resistance whatsoever. And you're even though you're not bypassing the Alps, you're essentially bypassing the Alps. There's no bypass switch in the circuit the way it's been built. But um, if, if you've got um, Almost all this, uh, almost all the signal passing in and out of the Alps spot, you're essentially bypassing it. And our listening tests have shown that that's exactly how it how it's working. Because sonically, you get an enormous amount of clarity with this very simple uh, stepped attenuator. The um, the whole it's almost like a veil has been removed from the signal. And the interesting thing is, if you're in an analog system, so if you're playing records and you've got our universal uh, uh, kit phono preamp in circuit, the, uh, the level of detail off of a vinyl record is second to none. I've never heard anything like it in my life. Um, there's things we're hearing on the records that I, I never knew even existed. And we have a fairly highly resolving system the way we are. The interesting thing, though, is if you bring that level of clarity to the digital side, so not our photo in, let's say we've got one of our, one of our DACs coming in here. And, and again, we've got line level, so something around 1 to 2 volts RMS. Typically, you're going to see about 1.5 volts RMS nominal. Um, the digital side, the clarity increases, yes, absolutely. Um, but it doesn't help the sonics. And we think the reason for that is the digital side has already got a bit of an edge to it. Even our really good system. And even with tubes further downstream in the preamp, running really beautiful Sylvania GTAs in the universal preamp, tube monoblocks, the digital side doesn't want any more clarity. What it wants is a little bit of a smoothing. And the interesting thing is the an Alps volume pot um, has just a tiny little bit, we figure it has a tiny little bit of resistance, uh, sorry, of distortion in the resistance, in this resistive track here. And as a result, it actually helps smooth out the digital sound. So even though you could say that the digital side has improved significantly, um, in a highly resolving system, it actually works against you, not for you. Isn't that interesting? Anyways, the this sounds so good in the vinyl system, in the all analog vinyl system, that I can't play records anymore without this in circuit. It's just absolutely phenomenal, the level of clarity. And because vinyl has an inherent amount of warmth, I think it can stand that level of clarity. It, unlike the digital side. Isn't that fascinating? And I came to this um, prototype build and this, and this discovery 
It's a voyage of discovery, folks, <laughs> every day here. But I came to that simply because I was bored um, balancing checking and, and measuring volume pots uh, and making sure our inventory is you know up to snuff. So anyways, uh, we'll probably talk some more about this in the future. We're seriously thinking about making a kit of a stepped attenuator. I'm not sure what you think about this job of wiring up the resistors. Um, I would call this an intermediate to expert uh, soldering job. Um, this is not something a beginner should tackle. Uh, in fact, if a beginner ordered this particular kit um, and said, I'm hoping I can do this, I would, I would cancel the order because this is, even though it looks relatively easy, it takes a fair amount of skill and patience to get everything lined up and not muck things up and you, you you know you have to you have to pay a real close amount of attention to detail so i'm curious to see what um other test builders and kit builders think about you know the difficulty of soldering this up if that's something you'd be interested in attempting i'm not sure how much these kits would cost the biggest cost for us is going to be um the the actual stepped attenuators they're not cheap but they're they're you know they're not they're not that expensive, but the time to match up pairs, there's 24 pairs. So there's 48 resistors plus a matched pair of 100 Ks. So that's 50 resistors that have to be matched um, to a very close tolerance. So that, and of course, bagged and labeled. So that that is going to be a heck of a job. Um, anyways, let me know what you think. Cheers, everyone.